check out the effects I got in this piece. I'm going to go over how I achieved them and the cratering. That's a new product that I'm testing out today. So stay tuned and let's see how it goes. Hello again, it's Janet and I'm here for Mooncusser Art. I'm going to be experimenting today. And when I experiment, I like to use a inexpensive canvas that I get at Michael's. I usually wait until they're having their big 70% uh, off sales, which they do from time to time. And that way, again, it's inexpensive. But because I'm playing, I want a little bit larger size. I'm using their mid-grade canvas, which it is a wrapped canvas, but it um, is not the gallery. So it's this is the, uh, the thinner edge. But again, it's nice canvas. It's uh, real tight and clean. So I've already taken the plastic wrap off of that. And I'm going to go about prepping this for us. Um, I'll take you through that process as well. I'm going to be um, trying to get some new effects. I, I actually, on uh, one of my um, Facebook groups, I was in a contest and I won this product and I'll go into that also. And I still haven't even picked out the colors that I want to play around with. So if you've subscribed to my channel, you've seen that I like to make these puddle pours and I use them to, yeah, kind of see how the colors go with one another. So anytime I have leftover resin, I grab one of my colors. I have a lot of different colors and I make a little puddle and I pour it right here on my tabletop and yeah they just pop off so i'll take you through that process as well one of the things i wanted to also mention before i get into doing this too much you can probably see behind me here i have a fan that i use in the window um, that's important you need to have good ventilation when you're working with resin because it's going to produce fumes um, you want to get them out and also Look up here. I have a fire extinguisher within arm's reach. <laughs> That's important because when you're using your torch um, and sometimes the resin will catch on fire. Um, I've had people that I know actually have to throw it right out the window to avoid uh, a lot of damage in their home. So I recommend getting a fire extinguisher. These are for, um, yeah, it's for like all kinds of dangerous fires. Uh, I think my husband bought these for me. <laughs> so he uh, found these and it'll, it'll work good on resin. And once the resin is in fire, yeah, I, I, I'm gonna save my house and not my art. That's the way that works. So think about your safety tips when I'm resin. Um, I'm gonna have my, oh, there they are. I'm gonna have my nitro gloves on and I'm also going to wear a full face mask. And that's going to protect my eyes because even the membranes of your eyes can absorb the fumes. So yeah, be careful. Um, and you use the ones that uh, have been certified because that's important too. Okay, so let's get going on this and I'm gonna take you in for a close up on what we're gonna do. So here we are and we're gonna start prepping this canvas and picking this out. So here's, our, here's a close up. Now, I'm gonna probably drop a picture in there on that, but this is a new product that's out there. So this is a product that you're gonna add into the resin to try to get some effects out of it. So we're gonna play with that. Um, I might tinker around with these things too. These are um, blades that you can use for painting. They're silicone, so they're flexible. Um, the brand is Catalyst. And they're fun because you can 
drag them right through your resin. And if you've got colors layered, you're gonna get a pattern out of that. So we're probably gonna play a little with that too. We're gonna prep the back of the canvas. So I've showed this many times before. I'm gonna just do a quick time lapse. I'm just putting tape around the back of my canvas to protect it from any drips here. I've taken the canvas outside. I'm using spray paint for my base layer and I'm just doing a real quick coat. I like using Rust-Oleum. Um, they tend to be very good in applications and it's going to seal down that canvas rather than having to do gesso. The spray paint works great and it adds a layer of color for the background. Let's get this thing going. All the prep is ready. Got my gloves, I've got my stir sticks, my mask is ready, and I always keep alcohol. I've got it in the jug bottle, I've got it in a mist bottle, and a dropper bottle. And I always, always have that on my tabletop, unless my piece is too big and I can't have it on the tabletop, but I have it ready to be used because I will put alcohol in to um, some of the stuff that I'm doing. So here's my lineup of colors. I know I said I make puddles. I don't have a puddle for that one. I can't find it, so that's okay. Um, but here are my color selections. I went through the bin because I went with a aqua color on my canvas. I'm gonna carry that through. Um, this is Artie Sue's teal. It's a uh, epoxy pigment. I got it a while back. And um, you can see, holding it up to the light, it is not transparent. That's an opaque. So you want to do a combination of transparents and opaques because in my mind, that gives you some good effects. Now, you can achieve that with pigments or, you know, this is Artist Loft um, Metallic Cobalt Blue. It's a nice color. It's got a little metallic in, in it, but it's transparent, inexpensive, especially when you buy it with those coupons, ladies and guys. I'm not going to say the guys don't coupon. Um, again... That's just an inexpensive paint. It's a color shift. Um, I like the color. I have used it in the past and I don't find that you get the color shift out of it in resin. You get it better when you paint it on a surface. But that said, it's transparent. It has a little pearl in there. And so it's okay. I don't care if it's gonna shift. This is uh, Art Tree Creations. They're from Australia as well as Artie Sue. Um, Winter Ocean, it's a pigment gel. Now this one, you can see I, I make notes. Only a tiny amount, very transparent, but it's got a nice color. So when I set it here, you can see it's gonna go well. All right. I've got uh, a combination I'm going to do, Artie Sue Bright Gold Metallic, and I'm going to put in a little bit of uh, Jacquard Pearl X. It's their Aztec Gold. And then I've got Artie Sue's Metallic Caribbean Sea. And then these are colors that are at the end of the line because I don't know if I'm going to use them, but they're on standby in case I decide to use them. They're all there. That one's interesting. I like that one in resin a lot, but I don't know that the green is going to go um, with what I'm doing. So it's in reserve. And again, this one is transparent. This one goes really good into resin. Here's another uh, tube of acrylic paint. Just be careful with your percentages. Never put more than 10% to the volume of your resin you've got in your cup. 
And then this is the one that we're going to play around with. This is that Chroma Chaos. And uh, we'll see what kind of effects we can get out of it, okay? So, there's the lineup. And uh, I'm going to batch up my resin on this. And let's start the project. All right, we have a 18 by 24 canvas, and I have batched uh, 16 ounces of resin and tinted with the colors that I uh, selected. What I'm doing with um, applying the resin to the canvas is I'm building my layers. So, as I mentioned before, some of them are transparent, some of them are metallics, some of them are opaque, and I'm layering my colors, putting uh, different types of transparencies or metallics next to one another. And that will help to make the effects that I'm looking for as I work the canvas. Okay, so let's torch the whole canvas now, get those bubbles out of there, and warm the resin up a little bit. And now because the resin is warmer, it's going to be more fluid, and you can tilt the canvas and get some movement between the colors. And then I'm just going to fill in with a little bit of the leftover clear. There was a few spaces, and we'll get that all over. Now here's that silicone blade and I'm just going to drag that across. You can see the pattern of the teeth on the blade and what's that what that's doing is it's just blending and uh, as it settles in it'll let the gold rise up and create some effects. I wanted to add a little bit more interest with some of the gold. You have to be careful with gold. Sometimes it can take over a piece. And then we're just going to, again, hit it with the torch to warm it up and get some effects out of that gold on the canvas. A little bit more tilt to get those colors to move in with one another. Then I'm going to start using my gloved hand to ensure that I have coverage on the side. Again, using that torch on the gold to get it to lift up to the top of the resin and tilting. So it looks like the 16 ounces that I batched up wasn't quite enough. So I'm actually scooping up some of the resin that flowed off my canvas. I'm putting a little bit on to add some more detail in some spots here and there. All right, now we get the heat gun out. I use a Wagner Furno 500. It has variable speeds and uh, variable heat settings. I like it a lot because I can really control. I have a fan blade, um, not a fan blade, but it's a fanned out blade that helps me to get a wider spread and I like that especially when I'm working with getting that lacing on the surface. All right. We're ready to start using that Chroma Chaos, and if you've used Resi Blast, I'm going to say that this is pretty much like the same product. Um, it's a very oily looking type of product. It comes out, um, has a very nice uh, tip on it that gives you small dots. I'm just going to go around on the canvas. I'm looking for areas that I want more detail, break up the monotony. And just like the Resi Blast, it's going to disperse those spots. So I didn't mix it into my cups of resin. What I'm doing is I'm applying it to the surface. And you can see that it's just pushing down in through those drops. I'm liking how those are working. And so now I'm just going to wrap it up by running my glove fingertip under the edge to get the drips. I am back at the art table and everything's cured and that's great and when I uncovered it I was happy with the way everything looked. I got some interesting details out of the uh, Chroma Chaos so I like the the details that it gave but when I took off the cover and started looking at it first thing I did was I touched one of these spots. 
So I stopped <laughs> because they're oily. And um, I have used, that's probably the one I touched. Um, I have used Resi Blast and Resi Blast does the same thing as this product does. Of course, now I'm trying to get it to come up. There's a little bit. And I don't know if you can see that there. But that's a little bit of oil. Um, of course, the one I guess I stuck my finger in is what I really got the worst off of. I can see still a little glob sitting right here on the surface. So, um, here's the thing. You can get some fun details by working with a product like this, but it's now going to give me issues if I want to do a smooth clear coat on it. And it's actually kind of gumming up. It's, it's, oh boy. So now I just smeared it. You know what? I'm going to stop and I'm going to, um, get you guys down in here close so you can see what I'm seeing. So, um, well, let's do a couple of things before I do that. So here's the, um, paint blade that I used yesterday. And it's, uh, again, it's got that resin is still attached onto it, but look at how, ta-da, it just comes right off. So it's, it's fun to use these. I didn't end up doing too much with it because there wasn't enough color change to um, what I was working here. So I'll do another video another time and I'll use it again and, and uh, I'll show you, you know, what you can do with these things. But that'll just, uh, I'll get the uh, alcohol and I'll clean that up completely and it'll be just like brand new. Um, and um, I wanted to show this to you guys too. Okay, well, I just stuck my hand here on this corner and it's sticky. So, yeah, it's going to give me um, something to think about on this stuff. But I'm going to flip this over real quick and show you my back. Is um, Because this is canvas, I took, I have a lot of um, leftover pieces of mat board because I'll cut my own mats for my prints and stuff. And what I do is I put that underneath the canvas and then I support it. Like this is just two painters sticks and I wedge that in there. And then what I do with my cups is I just put this wedge in here and it keeps the mat board, you know, tight. And then, let me grab another. And then my cups are just bloop, stuck on like that for my legs to keep my board up off the surface. So, yeah. If you want to pour on canvas, by all means, pour on canvas. Just support the back of your canvas. And if you pour one layer and you decide you're going to pour another layer, don't think, oh, it's got a layer of resin, it's hard. No, don't do that. What'll happen is when you pour the next layer, your first layer will start to warm up because of the heat of the resin and your canvas is gonna sag. So there's, there is a really good thing to know. There's one of my little pearl, my pearls of wisdom. That's a good one. Remember that. <laughs> Because I've been cocky and uh, thought, yeah, nah, it's got that first layer. It'll be fine. It's hard as rock because it was a thick layer. But uh, no, doesn't work that way. All right, so let me uh, bring you guys down in close. Check it out. It's pretty. Always um, in my studio and what I see on my screen, it's always a little bit uh, darker and uh, 
This is not dark. This is uh, turquoise. Very pretty turquoise. And uh, some nice effects. So I'm happy with all that. And there's, there's some of those. That's from the Chroma Chaos. And I'm trying to get... So you can see that it's an indentation, right? See how that's like a crater? So that's that's the result of using that because I poured the resin and then I put those drips in there. So you can see how it gets those craters. It, it's a fun little effect, but now I have to deal with that. So that's okay. I, you know, what I'm doing here is... I'm trying to share with you what's going on and help everybody learn and, uh, you know, I'm just going to stick my finger in. Let's come around here. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, now that one doesn't look too bad. That one's spread out, and I'm not even, like, looking here through my phone at it. I'm not seeing any um, oil laying in there. Let's look at these deeper ones over here. These are deep. So see? See right there? That's where I stuck my paper towel in. And see that? It's, it's sticky. Yeah. Sticky. <laughs> so... I'm going to have to deal with that and um, see if I can rectify it on this piece. I have, um, when I've used Resi Blast, and um, it gave me imperfections in my surface. I did not want that, and um, I got some tricks up my sleeve to rectify, so... Anyway, so that's, uh, yeah, that's the deal. So I'm going to see what I can uh, find that works. And once I have something that works here, I'm going to start there. Okay, so let's see what we got. I am at a point where I have tried a couple of my methods to get oils off of a resin surface. I'm bringing this in close rather than moving the camera because those are the pits. These here, they have a slight yellow color to them. Um, and I don't believe there was any gold in that area. I could be wrong because things move. But anyway, there's some that have a yellow color. This one, it's still sticky. And what's been happening is the longer this sits, the gummier and the stickier these spots are getting, and it's not oily anymore. So that means it's still kind of getting absorbed by the resin, and it's still going to be an issue for me. Um, so I am going to take a, this is a 400 grit piece of sandpaper. And I'm just going to scuff this up because I'm going to go for a second layer and just scuffing it up a little bit. It gives the resin for the second coat a little something to bite on. All right. And you can see I'm getting little things from the gummy spots. There's a, there's a spot right there that's gummy. So anyway, I'm going to scuff, scuff this up, and actually, um, now that I'm saying, you know, scuffing it up for a second layer, what I'm going to do is I have a product from Golden, and it will help to seal up those spots for me. This is the product from Golden. It is self-leveling clear gel. So that's what I'm going to apply over that. But before I do that, now that I've got it scuffed up, this is a Mr. Bottle 
filled with 99% alcohol. And I'm just gonna miss that. And I'm gonna wipe down the surface because I don't want any dust left on the board. It's also gonna help me, you know, kinda clean up those spots that are gummy. So I'm just gonna wipe that down real quick. Doesn't have to be perfect for this. Again, it's just so that I can get another coat of resin on and not have those pits show up. Okay. All right, now let's get ready to use that golden product. So just as quick as can be, we're gonna pour out some of the golden clear gel and using a foam brush, spread a thin layer across the surface and over the sides. I have let the clear coat, the um, self-leveling gel, completely dry. It's been over 24 hours and I'm trying to get in close so that I can pick up you can see my brush strokes in here. You see right here, follow this shine. And you can see how it's varying. So those are my brush strokes, but that's okay because it is crystal clear and I don't mind the brush strokes because those will actually disappear. There's a good look at the brush strokes. Those will disappear when I put the next coat of resin on. And um, so let's, get right here. These are some of those spots and they were gummy um, and very sticky, but it's gone. So this clear coat of the um, self-leveling gel from Golden did exactly what I wanted it to do. It sealed up those spots and I should not get any pitting from those in the next layer. So we're gonna do another layer and I don't want to do the same technique. So this time I'm going to add the Chroma Chaos in to one of my colors. And we're gonna see what kind of effects we get from that. Because like I said, this is a, you know, it's an inexpensive canvas and this is where I like to do my tests. All right, so let's get that started. I batched up 18 ounces of resin and I'm gonna put a whole clear coat over the entire surface and sides for flow of the resin. I'm beginning to add my colors. I want to preserve some of the areas that have those details that I got out of the Chroma Chaos with those craters. So I'm going to avoid those. And here, because I had put a couple of drops of the Chroma Chaos into that dark teal color, I'm trying to use a swipe method. I wanted to see what type of effects I could get with it in this dark color and bringing it across the metallics. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't see too much happening here. So in order to get some type of effects, I'm going to hit it with the torch and get that gold to lace out and that'll give me some effects I'm looking for. I'm going to continue working in the same way, putting down in sections. Color, I hit it with the torch to warm it up, and then I do a tilt here to try to get a, a nice flow of the different colors into one another. Then I use my heat gun with that attachment, and it's going to blow it out in a wide fan pattern, and that helps to bring out the lacing. So again, just continuing around the canvas, adding in more color where I wanted it, and following the same techniques to move the resin, torching it, and then 
using the heat gun to blow it out and bring up the lacing from the gold into those colors. So let's get the rest of the color out on the canvas, fill in the areas where I want to darken it up a little bit. The entire time I was shooting this video, I have mentioned it before, um, I tried my best to edit the color on this video and it's just not capturing how these colors are turquoises and teals. It's just, uh, I don't know whether it's the type of lighting I'm using, but I'm going to have to try to work on that for you all in the future. But it's a very teal color, this piece, not blue at all. So working here in the basement, I have my laundry room right next door to my uh, art studio, and I want to ensure that I'm not going to get any um, dust on it, so I'm covering it with uh, plastic, and uh, next morning after I remove that tent, I always give a good inspection. I'm going to remove the uh, support that I had there and my feet for cups, and I'm all set. Taking that tape off the back, that way I don't have to go through the sanding process of drips. And I just use the heat gun. You want to do it soon after you've poured. It makes it harder the more, longer you wait. So I do it the next morning, warm it up just a bit with the heat gun, and it pulls right off. Well, the project is done and Sargasso Sea is out in the sunshine. It's a little bit of a cloudy day and I tweaked the colors to try to get them as true as I can, but it's pretty impossible, I think. It is a lovely piece. Look at the details in here. That Chroma Chaos gave us some nice crater looks to it. Uh, when it was added in, it did some nice lacing, the torch, the heat gun. It all works together and made a beautiful piece. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something from my project here. And I hope it's inspired you to go ahead and try giving resin art a try. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to comment. I like to hear from you guys and it helps me decide what to do next time around. Thanks for watching.